Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. Our campaign is The Curse of Nineveh. It was written by Mike Mason, Mark Latham, Scott Dorward, and Paul Fricker, and it's available from the Chaosium website. I'm the GM, and this is episode 27. Um, we're not going to have a recap tonight, so without any further delay, let's begin. Let's continue our journey into the darkness. All right. So there had been an accident. A man came into the British Museum uh, bleeding profusely. Uh, he had collapsed. Um, you had called the police. He had uh, been uh, taken uh, to the hospital, uh, to Charing Cross Hospital. Uh, you had traced his blood uh, dribbles all the way back to the, uh, the train. And uh, what are you doing now? Well, since uh, this uh, poor fellow, uh, delusional as he seems to have been, was looking strangely for our acquaintance, Mr. Louis Wayne, and thought he had come to Bedlam. I think we should go and see if Mr. Wayne knows this Thomas Montfort himself uh, and can help us explain the connection, unlikely connection between himself and this fellow, uh, given that he knew our other asylum mate. Do you think it would be prudent to check out the scene of the attack? Um, so we followed the blood back to the Tottenham Court station. Is there... Um, the train's probably already gone through. And presumably several trains have gone through since he staggered out. I wonder whether it looks as though... Was there any, is there any police presence at Tottenham Court station? Did anyone see it and report an assault, for example? No. There may be police presence, but nobody noticed. Um, and the the blood that's at the train station, is it a quantity as though an attack happened there, or does it seem to go to the tracks as though the track attack happened on the train? It, it seems to go directly up to the tracks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we can stagger ourselves and each wait for a separate train to come and see if we find one at this part of the station that has uh, further indications of violence on it. I don't know how often I, they clean it up. I would think, think, mind you, that the train that he was on is God knows how far away by now. And we would have to wait for it to come back, which we don't. I mean, we could look at the schedule and see what trains came around the time that we think that he got stabbed. But by the time we got on the train, they probably would have cleaned it up, I'm thinking. I just was thinking, you know, maybe we should see the scene of the attack, but in hindsight, that's probably unrealistic. We should you know, probably meet up with our people and then go to Bedlam from there. You did we could also... Hmm? Go ahead, please. No, no. <laughs> um, you did bring up a good point, Mr. Albright, that... Um that we might be able to find the origin of the train and then perhaps uh, continue our investigations from there and determine whether or not this attack did occur on the train or it occurred at the uh, origin point. Well, presumably Mr. Munford could have gotten on anywhere along the line. True. Um, we might uh, be interested in looking for at the, at the, papers to see if anybody has an eyewitness account of an attack happening on the Tottenham Court line on the I mean, central yeah. line train. It being a, a crowded, be being crowded, this guy got stabbed enough that he's blood, bleeding out. I would think somebody would have noticed it. One would hope so, assuming, of course, that the uh, stabber was uh, visible to the naked eye and not, say, a shadow person or some other sort of entity. Um, that, that'd be really risky on a train with that many people, though. Yeah, I don't know uh, this line particularly well or how crowded it gets in the middle of the day, but 
Uh, I also don't know why the poor fellow thought that he was on his way to Bedlam when he was on his way to the National Museum. Well, look at the train schedule. What came through before this one did? I'm going to say probably an hour ago. Does that sound reasonable? Because he had to go from the train station to the museum. Then we talked to him there. Then he got taken to the hospital. So hour-ish, give or take. No, we can yeah, estimate the number of blocks that we've traversed and keep in mind that he was holding his guts in as he staggered to the museum. Get an estimate of time. But it still doesn't tell us where he got on the train. Uh, again, I think we should go to Bedford, but I'd like to leave a message to the club first and tell the fellows uh, where to find us. I know, of course, that Felix would like to visit his friend, the uh, mirror man. You think we should just there. go... You think we should just go back to the club and wait for them to come and then all go as a group? I'm flexible. I think it would be, be more efficient to uh, leave message at the club and uh, meet up at Bedlam. Okay. Yeah, who knows how those two could be out, you know, stashing bodies, who knows where. Mm, indeed. Um, so off to Bedlam with us. But I'll right. I'll call uh, I'll call and leave a message. All right, uh, Felix and Cyrus, you had gone to uh, Cyrus's apartment uh, to check on uh, to see if the brother the um, children of Tranquility were there. They were not. Uh, it didn't appear that they had been there at all. And uh, what are you doing now? You had left. You think we should? Uh... Swing back to the club, or no? Did they say they were going over to the museum? Uh yeah, they did. But what are we gonna do there? I don't know. Same thing we do there every time. We we watch Reginald awkwardly court Leicester and get little dibs and dabs of information, and you know. I I'm I'm rooting for her as long as she's not a psychopath who's trying to bring a demon into the world. Aren't they all? Well, mm -hmm. anyway, though he uh, good for bully up for him. Um, so what do you? Something coming through on the radio here. I strange. Hmm. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, it's just getting static right now. I don't know. There we go clear that up now we'll head over to the museum and um but i uh, checking him kind of keeping an eye on this mirror you know we keep having people follow us all kinds of around we <coughs> what are we gonna do about this gato guy uh i was trying to forget about him but that's not gonna happen i i'm actually a little worried about him uh Obviously, you know, you get a little, we joke about it, but he's a dangerous guy. Well, I've been thinking about it a little bit, and if he's the head of these gangsters you saw last time, um, if you take out, you know, take out the head of the snake, who's going to pay him? They're not going to stick around if they're not getting paid. No, but I'm wondering if something happens to him, if something happens to all of them. Mm. One crow Shame. with two, two crows or one stone. Right, probably, yeah, more like, yeah, the ten birds. Is that what you said, ten? Damn, car's loud. Can't hear a thing. Ten birds, two birds. Two birds. Yeah. Yeah, but there's, there were so many of them that were, they're not, there was a ton of them when they came out of that party. I mean, this is, um, bigger and, and say we do something to him what's to say the others all don't turn on to us so that we're not just fighting one now we're fighting every street gang in in london yeah then it's time to jump on a boat and head somewhere and we already got one right on us everywhere we go i think we should take the towel out though at the very least so we could operate with some freedom if we could just get a hold of and find out Find out who's put him on it. I strangely think this one will explode too if we try and interrogate him. Well, 
we should try it. We should try oh. it out. And if he okay. does or she does, well, so be it. At least we'll know. You know? Agree. Agreed. In the name of science, we should. We've got it. I concur. Yeah. So, uh, well, here we are. The si the museum. I don't see them anywhere. Oh, we could go in and see, ask with the uh, one of the guy's secretaries, see if they're still here. Yeah. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Walking up the stairs. You coming with Cyrus? Yeah, I'm coming with you. All right. I should didn't hear I was you just there. Taking a look around, making sure nobody's following us. See anything? Uh, as you are walking up the stairs, you get to the door, and you notice that there is a column of cleaning crew. It's really just three guys, um, but they seem to be mopping up the floor, and it's distinctly red. You can see they're mopping up red paint or blood, something. Um, and Yates is standing over to the side supervising. Um, uh, they've kind of, they've put up a barrier around the area so they can clean. Um, and if, if anybody makes an inquiry, Yates is saying to them, uh, oh, don't worry about it, sir. It's uh, just that uh, we had a small spill. And Yates is the head of security, correct? Yeah, correct. Okay. And Felix. he knows you. Right. Felix, you see that? Yeah, wonder what they spilled. Uh, there's Yates. So let's go ask Mr. Yates. Uh, Mr. Matthews, Mr. Finley, uh, your friends are no longer here. Um, I'm hoping they didn't make that mess. That I'm oh no no no. Um, while we were engaged, uh, uh, a gentleman came off the street and he was uh, injured. Um, and uh, we called for the, the ambulance to take him to the hospital. Uh, I believe your friends, I, I'm not sure where your friends went, but they seemed rather concerned. They may have gone with him to the hospital. Someone they knew? Uh, no, no. Uh, a stranger off the street. Uh, we identified the man as a Mr. Uh, Thomas Montford. Uh, they've taken him to uh, Charing Cross Hospital uh, over on Suffolk Street. And you said that's where the, the rest of our crew went? I don't know that for sure, but they went out with him, so I assume that perhaps they, they seem to be quite concerned. Uh, he said something to them. I'm not exactly sure what it was. All right. Well, Cyrus, what do you want to do? Um... I mean, I guess we should go to the hospital and check up on, uh, see if the rest of the group went there. Yeah. Yep. The car's still warm. All right, tally ho. All right, so you're heading over towards uh, Channing Cross uh, uh, Hospital. All right, uh, the three of you are heading out to Bedlam. Uh, you arrive uh, maybe, you know, 40 minutes later. Not exactly sure how far that distance is, but okay, we'll just say that. Um, you, you've arrived at Bedlam, you park where you often park, and uh, you head up, up inside. What would you like to do? Well, there's the psychiatrist that's spoken to us in the past, so I'm going to see if he's available. Um, he is available, yes. Um, Gentlemen, uh, what can I do for you? Uh, I'm afraid uh, we're here again under somewhat um, complicated circumstances. Uh, this is our new associate, uh, Ms. Jane Selkirk, Dr. Perger. Um, is, uh, is your uh, Mr. Uh, Wayne still uh, under care here? Oh, Mr. Wayne, Mr. Lewis Wayne, yes, he is. Um, I, I would have thought you wanted to speak about Mr. Punchin. Well, um, I understand that Mr. Punchin's been removed to a safer facility after the incident. 
That's correct, yes. Um, the curious thing is we were just this late morning at the British Museum uh, when a man with uh, grievous injuries came in and he was desperate to speak to Mr. Wayne, which seemed like the most curious of coincidences given that he was Mr. Punchin's former uh, co-resident here. And I, I was hoping to see whether Mr. Wayne knew the fellow or not. Well, um, this time of day, I believe that uh, Mr. Wayne is out on the grounds, uh, uh, either uh, on a walk or uh, sitting on a bench somewhere. He's always been the most agreeable fellow. Um, yes, he's a very, he's a wonderful man. Everybody enjoys him. Um, and of course he was, you know, as you know, an accomplished artist. Um, well, I would say he still is, quite frankly. Yes. Uh, you know, his seems to have gotten a bit bizarre in the last years, but that's probably part of his psychosis, yes. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to find him out there. Um, well, if you wouldn't mind us heading out, I would be most grateful to have a chat with him. I don't see why not. If he, if he becomes upset or agitated, you, know, you understand. But he, well, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's not a very easily agitated fellow. He's no, remarkably calm, calm, in fact, given some of the things that he's witnessed. Um, very well, and we get a pass of some kind and head out. Right. Jane, you'll find this guy really quite uh, astonishing. I, uh, it's a pity that he's mad because he's very gifted. I'd be most interested to see what uh, sort of artwork he is involved with. Do you like cats? Cats? Hmm. I do. So does he. Yeah. All right. So you head outside and the grounds are nicely kept. And uh, you've seen him a number of times before, so you know what he looks like. And uh, it doesn't take you long before you notice him uh, down a small hill, sitting on a bench uh, in front of the duck pond. And uh, he seems to have a bag of breadcrumbs, which he is feeding to the ducks. Uh, quietly sitting to himself, uh, enjoying himself, and occasionally tossing some food to the ducks. Do you do? So from a little distance, hello, Mr. Oh, Mr. Wayne. Yes, that's me. I'm Lewis Wayne. It's it's good to see you again. Do you remember? Uh, I'm I'm Reginald Harcourt. Do you remember my friend Fuller Albright? He does really turn his head, but you can see he glances out of the side of his face at you, and he says, "Ah, oh, yes, you're you're the people who were here with Mister Punchin." Yes, that's 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 quite so. Um, we've, uh, we've run across a fellow who is desperate to speak to you, and I don't know if you know the, the man or not. Oh, I, uh, I, I know quite a few people. Um, I mean, there's, uh, there's Bradley, and there's John, and there's, there's Michael. He's a very nice fellow, and, uh, and, uh, and quite a few others. Um, do, you, do, you do, do you have a friend named Thomas? A Thomas oh, yeah. Munford. Yes, I, I know a Thomas Munford. He uh, he came to the British Museum, thinking that he was here and looking for you. He seemed very urgent. Oh, do you know what he wanted? I'm afraid only all that we know, I believe, is that that he felt it was urgent that he find you personally. He was confused about his location, and he had been, I'm sorry to say, rather seriously injured by someone. I, I, I don't, I don't understand. Um, he's, uh, I, I can't imagine why he'd want to speak to me. Well, it if seems- I may ask, sir, sir who, who is uh, this Mr. Thomas? He suddenly stops talking, 
and he looks side to side and he looks over and he's looking very intensely at a bush that's over by the side of the pond and he leans forward and he's looking and, have and a he quick says look at the bush while he's and he says Mr. Munford is a member of the Croydon and Suffolk Cat Fancier Society. See. One never knows. Do you know anything about cats? I do. I have several. You have cats? I do. Are you near him? Mm, kind of. I'm still kind of slightly in the back there, but not too close. Giving him a with, space. With, without looking at you, he motions for you to come closer to him. I, but I oblige. His, his gaze is forward. He's not looking at you. I oblige. And as soon as you're kind of within reach, he takes his hand and he puts it on the side of your face and he taps your temple three times. And he says, do you hear any scratching? Do I hear any scratching? No. Um, yes. Not at this time, sir. Do you ever hear any scratching inside your head? I can hear it. It's them. They can get inside your brain and control you. Mm. The cats. Indeed. I've heard this before. I don't know if you're one of them or if you're in league with them, but you said that you have them within your home, so you're highly susceptible. They're trying to rule the world, you know. They're trying to take over everything. You're not the first man who's uh, mentioned that before. Ah, so you've heard it before. I've heard of this before, yes. It's a long time conspiracy. I truly believe now that cats are the masters of this planet and that they play with us like mice. We're just their toys, their, their playthings. Mm. They're everywhere and they're listening. They use electricity, you see. They use electricity to get inside your brain and control you. Mm. And he glances, just sort of half glances at all the rest of you. And he says, don't say it out loud, though. Don't tell them that you know, or you'll be in the same boat that I'm in. You see, they've gotten inside and they've, they've made me made me mad i see well, i should be more aware with uh my cats there at my 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 place i shall put them under suspect for sure how do you feel about um the the budgie mr wayne i have a, a budgie at home oh birds are lovely I've seen quite a few lovely birds here. I noticed the other day there was a, a nut thatch, and, uh, and just the other day I saw Stella's blue jay. Quite beautiful, quite quite lovely. Mm. They and sing course, more prettily than cats as well. And when you say the word cats, he stiffens up. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, uh, you only knew this mountain from the um, Society of Feline Appreciators? The Association. Association. Yes, he was a friend of, uh, of you know, the chairperson. And, uh, I mean, we all were. Um, I am. Um, I, I used to be quite involved at one time, but... Uh, uh, not, not since I realized what was truly going on. 
you can see how that would uh, alter one's sense of affiliations. Um, you didn't socialize outside of the association, though. I had quite a few friends. Yes, of course. I mean, I, uh, I like parties. Parties are lovely. Indeed. Indeed. But uh, outside of the association, you didn't know Thomas Montfort socially? Well, he was a friend, but more, more an acquaintance than anything else. Why do you think he would be seeking you if he were injured? Do you have any idea? I, I don't know. How was he injured? I'm not certain. He uh, was attacked quite uh, seriously. He was cut. That Call never happens. Brian, okay. Excuse me. Call it's Brian calling me. You Sorry. know, it's times like this that I like to pick <laughs> up a copy of Session Zero, the introductory guide to role play games, written and published by John Byram. I can't turn this phone off. My other phone's out of the room. And yet, when it rings, it rings all of the phones in the house. Sorry. What time are we at? 6 33. I mean, we don't have to edit all that out, but just a little of it would be okay. My guess, if it's Brian calling, then he might call again. I haven't talked to him in a long time. I'll edit it all out. Do you have what it takes? Remember, adventure awaits at Skull Splitter Dice, the finest in metal dice sets. Nice. What am I going to do? My Shoggoth is all dull. <laughs> you need Smith Shoggoth Shine All. <laughs> all right. For the sheeniest, shiniest Shoggoth in town, be sure to pick up Smith Shiny Shoggoth Shine. Mm. It's the shit. Uh, oh, all right. <laughs> all right. Where were we? We're, we're back with uh, Wayne, uh, Mr. Wayne on the thing. Telling you everything that he knows. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I like parties, especially cake. Cake mm. is very nice. Yes. You see that one there? That's a mallard. And that one's a Muscovy, and the Muscovy doesn't make anywhere near the same kind of quacking noise that uh, that a mallet does. Quite different. Yes. The females are rather drab, but the males are quite strikingly beautiful. If you don't mind me asking, sir, and other than the Appreciation Society, where did Mr. Thomas? Uh, uh, what did he do for a living? Uh, where did he work? Oh, I believe that he was a retired policeman, a, mm -hmm. a detective, in fact, I think. Interesting. Yes, his wife left him many years ago. Oh, that's a shame. Do you by chance know where he lives? I, I don't have it memorized. I'm sure that at one point I knew where he lived. Uh, and he starts glancing over at that bush again and looking down to make sure there's nothing underneath. How Sometimes, far away is the bush? Six feet. Walk over there. Okay. Be careful. You know they're made of electricity and light. Mm, they, can, they can they can electrocute electrocute your brain. You don't see anything over there. Okay. Have they been looking about there, sir? So... I believe he was friends with. Um, Mrs. Lewis, she's the chairwoman of the society. Um, he rather fancied her almost as much as he fancied, well, you know, them. True, true. I can't imagine why anyone would harm the man. He's rather harmless. 
I imagine when he had a gun and he was hunting criminals, he was far more dangerous, but not anymore. Well, that's the remarkable thing is, you know, um, he was hell bent, even though he was grievously injured, on, on speaking to you. I can't imagine why. That's the, that's the very thing that has me so befuddled, Mr. Wayne. After all, you're living a rather quiet life here. What if he's discovered the conspiracy of, the, of them and that yeah. they've orchestrated this? They don't want him to come here. They don't want him to tell anyone. I shouldn't be telling you. He, oh, looks, I he, looks, you. he looks up at you rather paranoid all of a sudden. Mr. Wayne, I assure you, the information you've secreted to us is entirely confidential. We are not on their side, after all. I have to be sure. He motions for you to come closer, and he puts his hand on your face, and he taps your temple three times. Do you hear any scratching? No, no you see when you, when you when you tap the temple, they hear the noise and they scratch at the walls. Here mm. it comes again. Call from Brian Southard. The phone says Southard. Call from Brian Southard. Can you hear it downstairs talking? <laughs> I am so sorry. It's a modern world. And you in see, a modern that's... world, you need a modern book to introduce you to the world of role play game. And that's where Session Zero, <laughs> an introduction to the world of role play games by John Byram, comes into play. Pick up your copy today. Oh, the self-promotion is disgusting. <laughs> Can I offer you a muffin? Muffin, 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 muffin. All right. Sorry for the interruption. Let's get back to it. Well, you see, that's why I keep a budgie. You know, they never scratch. Yes, they're lovely birds. What color is your budgie? He's, uh, he's mostly a, a very bright canary yellow. Oh. Uh, but he has a little bit of tropical coloring on his lower wings. They come in many different colors. They come in greens and blues. Sometimes they have white heads. Sometimes they have yellow heads. Sometimes their their wings are slightly differently colored. And he'll go on and on about budgies. He seems to know a great deal about different breeds of everything. But not a lot about Thomas Montfort. Um, no. Well, I mean, he knew a lot, kind of. Yeah. He was an ex-police detective. Um, Had a crush on Ms. Lewis. Um, what's Miss Lewis's you, yeah. What's Miss Lewis's first name? Um, that's Edith. Edith Lewis. Yes. She's a she's a lovely woman. Uh, loves cats very much don't know why. She doesn't know the dark truth yet. Just a long shot by chance. Did we hear her name mentioned at the auction? No. Uh, well, uh, it's always a pleasure to see you, Mr. Wayne. Uh, I'm sure we'll be visiting again. Is there anything we can bring you? Should we drop by in the future? Anything you're wanting? Well, I've I've got a lot of art supplies, but I don't think I'm out of anything, except perhaps Prussian blue. Mm. But um, I I use oil paints. Um, uh, I don't know any brands, but he'll give you the brand uh, and tell you that Prussian blue, uh, a, a tube of Prussian blue, would be useful. I could facilitate that for you, sir. All right. Uh, let's jump back to uh, Felix and Cyrus. What are you guys up to? 
uh, you've arrived at uh, uh, the hospital. Um, it's busy. There's lots of stuff going on. What do you do? Do you even know the name of the person? And we're just looking to see if those guys are out there. All right. We figured uh, they'd be walking around. Yeah, you walk around. You don't see them. You go into the lobby. Uh, they're not there. Shit. Shit. Uh, I don't know if they didn't get here yet or we've already missed them. When, uh, I'll just go up to the desk. Let's just ask the person at the desk. Uh, hey, uh, desk person. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. How can I help you? There's a guy that that um, just came in from the from the museum. What's his name? Ah, uh, yeah. Are you a, are you a relative? Uh, no, but I was hoping that maybe you had seen him get rolled through here and possibly notice if there were three fancy looking gentlemen with him. I, I'm sorry, sir. We can't give out information unless you're you're related in some way. Um, I, I'm not even sure who you're talking about. Okay. Well, that's cool. I didn't. I, it's uh, cool in here. Cool. Oof. Temperature. Yikes. Uh, we'll be on our way. Sorry to bother you. <laughs> Jeez. Pulls out her whip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't think it was going to work going to the hospital and asking to see the guy that just got injured, but it was worth a shot. Yeah. Yeah, well. All right, so what's your next move? What now, Cyrus? Uh, hmm. I mean, we can hang out here for a little bit. If they don't give them a half hour. I don't think that lady's going to put up with that. Oh, I, uh, we'll, we'll get her name. We'll get her name and uh, have her fired tomorrow. We'll write a very stiff letter. Stern, not stiff, a stern letter. Let's see so, what that, that street vendor is selling. I'm a little bit peckish. I will uh, wait for them. I, I don't know what he sells. Fish and chips. That's yeah, wrapped in newspaper. Yeah, fish is good. Sorry for if that's a yeah. if that's a cliche. <laughs> There's gonna be so much editing on this one. Anyway. He's selling corn on the cob on on the yeah. stick. All right. <laughs> so now, but the point is, I want to see if anybody's been trying to trail us. You don't think you see anybody, no. Cyrus, we're losing our edge, Cyrus. We're, we're getting it's tired. Like, it's almost like we're punch drunk now. We've been chased. We've had weirdos in our house. We've, you know, you you even gave your apartment to these guys, and they just disappeared I mean after a while it's, it's just like we've exhausted ourselves just swinging and swinging and swinging we've punched ourselves out um, we need to recoup yeah I think it's time we head back to the club and just have a drink and relax for a little bit let me get four more of those fish and chips to go okay some good food, finally, not that stuff that they got at the club. All right, so you get your fish and chips. It's quite good. Um, you head on back to the club, and uh, as you uh, as you walk into the club, um, the, what's his name? Um, Stokes. Um, Meets you at the door and uh, he hands you the, uh, a note. I can't remember what his name is all of a sudden. Sykes? Sykes. There we go. That sounds um, familiar. Sykes. Sykes hands you a message. Uh, a message for you, sir. Uh, your friends telephoned. And it says that they have gone to Bethlehem. Yeah. And there's a time stamp on it. He wrote the time down. So that was like an hour ago. What do you think, sir? Do you think they're still up there? Do we even, are we even 
alive enough in our minds to drive over. And let's just stay here, see what information they gathered, enjoy some more of this delicious fish and chips. I think they got pheasant on the menu again. Who the hell eats pheasant? I don't know. I, I eat pheasant. Every uh, body eats pheasant that I know from here. You know what? I'm just going to go sit down. I've been looking for frankfurters. I've been looking for a good steak. I've been looking for nothing. There's mutton. Once um. again. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, the other three. Uh, you're 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 just now leaving, Mister Wayne. What would you like to do? He's a right nutter. Yes, it's interesting seeing him outside of the context of uh, poor Punchin's disorder and paranoia. It's easier to tell that he's uh, mad as a hatter. Um, uh, shall we? Um, shall we see if we can visit uh, Felix's friend, the Mirror Man, while we're here? Sure. Send him Felix's regards. Yes. Ask how he's about. We've got all these right. fancy passes Sydney after all. Man, I'd like to, to see him for myself. All right. Well, we'll say that you, you visit Mirror Man, and uh, he only responds in backwards if you talk to him while looking in the mirror. Uh, but he doesn't really have anything interesting to say. Do we see anything unusual in the mirror? No. Um, but you... See, Lef. I'm just trying to say Felix backwards says hello, but it's too hard. Okay. Um, do an idea roll. <coughs> Excuse me. Ooh. That's a whopping 11. And, hey, I got an 11 too. 11. Wow. <laughs> it's 11 day. Um, yeah, what, what are we rolling for? Idea, Ro. Idea. Idea. Um, yeah, I made it. Okay. But did you get an 11? No, I didn't get an 11. That would have been uncanny. <laughs> um, you are just two doors down from Mr. Wayne's room. All right, ah. I'll give it a shot. Just checking it for cats, you understand. I mean, yeah, we'll go. Is it door locked? It's it's not even closed. Just it's walk open. in. Just walk in. Oh, what are you doing there, sir? Mr. Albright, what are you doing there, sir? Just looking. I mean, you must admit, you? Jane, there is some connection that we don't understand. Mm, Keep in mind, that's... this man, we met this man in the context of him being. Uh, housed with a student of the ancient Near East who uh, was nearly destroyed by his own experimentation. So it yes. seems like a, too much of a coincidence. And there was a spell cast, and we don't know that Punchin did it. So mm. somebody had to cast that spell. All right. Uh, if you're more comfortable in the hallway, Jane. Oh, no, no, no. Um... Something did come to mind here. Uh, we'll, we'll discuss it after we're, we're done looking around. Well, Jane, as you approach the door, uh, the first thing that you notice uh, is color. Um, Mr. Wayne has pretty much pinned up all over his room, pretty much wherever there's a, a, a spot of wall, uh, one of his pieces of art. Uh, which oh consists mostly of cats. Now, some of them are cats in sort of anthropomorphic poses, kitty cats at Christmas and stuff like mm. that. But his, his more, uh, more recent work has begun to take on a rather frightening look.
I guess he's in his Jackson Pollock stage. And you get the distinct, creepy sort of feeling that wherever you go in the room, eyes are watching you. These are works in oil? Yeah. Interesting. Why is everything... What, why did he ask us for Prussian blue? Because Prussian blue is a dark color, and that's not dark. <laughs> well, perhaps that's because he's running low on Prussian blue. Yeah, perhaps. But, but it looks like his art this. style has changed. Well, yeah, rather, rather so. Um, I think that's to do with his institutionalization. Now, other than that, his room has a bed. It has a nightstand. It has uh, a table that he uses for his art. There are art supplies all over it. Uh, there's a little desk. Um, there's a little wardrobe where he keeps his clothes. Um, and there's I'm a window looking outside. Not going to sack anything by any means, but yeah, I'm going to get nosy and think I'm peeking the tables, the book stands, the nightstands, the wardrobes. So much from this artwork. It's taking on very much a of a, of a Indian flair to it, like like um, what what do they call those? Mandelas, like mm. sacred drawings. Mm. Oh my! It does have a definitely r religious overtone to it, and perhaps it a little bit. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's so unrealistic as to be. Well, I guess that's why it's here. Yes. Do you think that um, he was inspired by a cat's eye at some point? Do you think that there is a possible connection between the artifacts that we are missing? No, but I do have something that I could mention that would, may, it's maybe quite out on the limb, but it's, it might actually bring some kind of strange explanation. Mm -hmm. He mentioned electricity. And as you see in these pictures here and here, uh, doesn't this look like some kind of wave? It looks like, you know, like electricity all around it, waves and... You know, certainly emanations. Yes. yes, I see emanations, waves, yes. yes. Waves but I'm looking for something to connect him to ancient Sumeria, not something to connect him to Nikola Tesla. You know what I find very curious, though? Yes. He seems to have almost a fear of cats. Mm. But he belongs to a society of cat fanciers. And he still does cat artwork. Mighty strange. Well, what if cats are his focus and his focus has been corrupted somehow? Perhaps under the guise of a cat, something is come into his psyche of sorts. Do you imagine that something is actually scratching around inside his skull, the poor man? It's possible, but maybe it's not a cat that's sc scratching around. Again, on a limb on that, but maybe cat is the only thing he can perceive it as. Just out of curiosity, either outside of his door or inside of his room, do we see anything that looks like the stones that were used for the protection spell? No. Okay. Um, uh, but Fuller, you're looking around the room, and um, surprisingly for an artist, he's rather neat. Or the staff is making sure that he's staying neat. But inside of his wardrobe, his shoes are all lined up perfectly. His suits are all facing the same direction. Um, his desk is very neat. Uh, he keeps his correspondence uh, in a little uh, 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 with uh, like uh, 
it's all separated into groups and the groups are tied up with little bows and nothing looks out of place like it's askew not really no um, and there's nothing that seems different about his current accommodations than did when he was living with Mr. Punchin. Well, he's now in a private room. Um, just a moment. Hold on just one second. Yeah, because he Mr. wasn't... Mr. Go ahead. Mr. Harcourt, Mr. Albright, um, I, I dare not uh, really mention this, but uh, was the poor fellow ever subjected to... Uh, Electroshock therapy that Sorry. you're aware of? Not that I'm aware of. What was Although the question? Whether, whether he'd that, ever undergone electroshock. His whole, his whole fascination with electricity and cats. Well, I can tell you this. The cat thing, that's mm -hmm. recent. Because when he was living with Punchin, there were not cat pictures. Yes, there were. Oh, you did not... I don't remember them being okay. His Never career mind me. <laughs> before he went mad, his career was largely about charming cat images. Yes, I, I recognize less some of charming. Out of, the, uh, out of the magazines. Um, I did not know. That Fuller, was. as you are, as you are looking through his things, uh, one yeah, as you're as you're near his desk, you can smell roses. Roses. And there's no there's no roses blooming outside, but you have you can see you can smell roses. Incense? No perfume, maybe. See if I can try to like narrow it down to where it's coming from. Do a spot hidden. Spot hidden. Okay, let's see. All right. Ooh, I made it, but barely. Okay, amongst his correspondence. Uh, there is a stack of lavender-colored ah. envelopes uh, that are also tied up with a ribbon. Um, smell them. And they, they distinct, they smell like rose water. Who is the letters written to or from? Uh, they are from a Miss, Mrs. Edith Lewis. Okay. What do they say? Well, they're tied up in a uh, bundle. I don't want to really break into his stuff. You know, I just was just casually yes. looking. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to untie his letters, but I just wanted to know who it was written to. So he's got a thing with uh, Edith. I say, Fuller, that's a striking discovery you've made there. Mm -hmm. Um I think uh, we should probably um, slip out of here before we're discovered by either staff or Mr. I, uh, I do agree. Most definitely, yes. But, I, but now we have two interesting names to look up in the telephone book. Um, Tom, give me a, a timeline here. When we saw him with Punchin, if he was collecting cat artwork then, so we have a general idea of what he was doing. So all this weird stuff is like new since he left Punchin, right? There was some of it on his wall. There's a lot more of it now. Um, yeah, Mr. Wayne is a rather famous because he did magazine covers and stuff like that with kitty cats at Christmas and stuff like that, you know. Charming. Now it's just kind of weird. All right, uh, let's uh, let's uh, get back to the club. Um, have a late luncheon or tea. See what the fellows are up to. Uh, yeah, it's and almost tea time, actually. Make a couple of phone calls. I'm most curious to meet these these connected friends. Mm. Of Mr. Wayne. I wonder if we can get information from the hospital as well. There must be some yes. doctor at the club who can phone and make inquiries for us. I think that might be um, standoffish if we just say, oh, I saw a fellow stabbed at the museum today. 
but if we can get, uh, you know, what's that fellow? Bledsoe, I think his name is, the doctor who, um, you know, the funny mustache. You can get him to call for us. I'll tell him anything, probably. All right. So you guys leave the, uh, you leave Bedlam and head back to the club. Uh, you arrive back and you find uh, Felix and Cyrus uh, drinking and carrying on. Eating fish and chips. Oh, they ate that. those. They ate those quite a while, a while ago. Yeah, it's are very hard to catch up with. The scenes you've had. <clears throat> ah, excuse me. Uh, the grease from the fish has really locked up the old throat there. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, you guys are hard to catch up with. So, how is the children' tranquility? Are they enjoying your apartment? Your flat? They are not there, and from the looks of it, they never were. That's a bit disappointing. I was counting on having a location and contact arrangement for them. So was I. I had a couple of questions I needed to ask them, but... So there's no, you'd say there's no indication they were ever present? Everything was left exactly the way I left it. So uh, we can only understand, therefore, that they were being disingenuous with us when they agreed to that arrangement? Or, well, we've seen people following us. So maybe they saw the same tale that we saw and already considered themselves compromised. By the, by the way, not to change the subject on you, but we got permission to spend the night in the museum. Excellent. I think we need to finalize it still, unfortunately. Uh, so uh, we uh, spoke to Mr. Keats today about having an overnight at the museum. Uh, but as he was finalizing the paperwork for that, um, a man collapsed in the front lobby, uh, having suffered some violent attack. And that's where that's, we've been following that up this afternoon. Takes us back to Bedlam. We saw your friend, uh, the Mirror Fellow, Felix, but he was, uh, well, I don't know how to communicate with him. Uh, he was probably just reflecting on old times. <laughs> You've been waiting to say that. <laughs> that um, so you guys talked to, uh, you went to Bedlam. Yes. You went to Bedlam. Talk to the, Wayne. See, the astonishing thing is the that the guy? who showed up leading uh, significantly, Fuller can tell you about his injuries. I didn't look. Uh, the fellow showed up uh, at death's door at Bedlam, thinking, uh, at the museum, thinking it was Bedlam, and looking for Lewis Wayne, which seemed like more than a coincidence to me. And if I remember right, Lewis Wayne's the hardcore cat painting picture. Yeah, he's right? the cat drawing wackadoo that was uh, very friendly. Um, but our, our, our conversation, I, Jane Fuller, I think you'd agree. He seems um, deeply disturbed. Oh, right? Yeah. yeah. Man is troubled. He's a nutter. But, He's a nutter. He's quite a nutter. Um, but he, he didn't know the fellow that showed up bleeding at the museum. He just knew him from the Cat Fanciers Association. And he asserted that he was, that the fellow who showed up bleeding had a romantic attachment to an Edith who ran the Cat Fanciers Association. Uh, with whom he's had correspondence himself, oddly I, enough. Um, I mean, I'm sure you guys looked because because that's because you guys are all, always pretty thorough. But being that he's such a cat lover, did you dig through his stuff to see if maybe that cat's opal was hanging out in his room? 
I did not see it. Went through his bed stand, his table, his wardrobe. Didn't see it. Uh, you said something about a woman? Yes, Edith Lewis. And somebody had an attraction for her? Yes, Wayne did. So, or at least there's love letters between the two of them. I mean, this could be reaching, but if a cat lover and a admired another cat lover and was in possession of a cat's eye opal, wouldn't he give it to a woman of his affection who had affection for cats? You want to know what's really funny? They're members of the Cat Fancier Association. He's terrified of cats. Maybe something. We've all seen weird stuff over the last few months. Maybe there was an incident with the opal before he gave it to her, or maybe there was something happened to him involving a cat and freaked him out or disturbed him. But Certainly he's quite disturbed, and he has um, his chest, and I reach over and tap Cyrus on the temple three times. Um, what does that test prove? For poor Mr. Wayne, uh, if that happens and you don't hear a scratching inside your skull, it means the cats aren't in there yet. And Wayne hears scratching? Apparently. Maybe and he we should... believes the cats are taking over the world or in charge all along. Maybe we should bring him a cat. You'd probably give the poor man a heart attack. Uh, but... I mean, we did see a ghost and some kind of giant creature impel. Uh, I don't even want to bring it up, but scratching in someone's head. Not saying that he's got a cat in his head, but there could be some. Somebody was just in our dreams the night a night or two ago. That was just last night. Last night. That, I, I'm see, Felix. We are mixed up. We we do need a break. A oh, Delgado, no less. A Delgado. There we go. Maybe Delgado did something to him to get the cat's eye opal from him, and now he's afraid of cats because he associates the name Delgado. I, 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 I've had quite a bit of whiskey and coffee tonight, so. Uh, at any rate, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to ring for Sykes and get the number for this Edith Lewis and uh, also uh, Thomas Montfort and see what the households have to say about their respective parties. Um, well, Thomas Montfort first. Presumably nobody's at home unless he's a married gentleman. Uh, Sykes tells you that uh, he needs to know where they're from know where they're where where to look for their phone numbers or addresses. Um, fancier society. Um Fuller. Yes. Croydon and Suffolk. Uh Fuller it, it suddenly dawns on you that that Edith uh Lewis's address was on those envelopes, but you didn't take them. No, I didn't take them. I guess we're going back to Bedlam. But the the Cat Fancier Society was from Croydon, Suffolk. That is true. Sure. And she sure. was the head. She was the head of the fan, Cat Fancier thing. Yeah. Once we get a number on her, which shouldn't be that hard, as the president of the Cat Fancier Association of Croydon, Suffolk, then we'll be able to get beat on where. Uh, Thomas was from. With that information, uh, Sykes okay. says that he should be able to track that information down. I'll give him an hour or so. I'll find that for you. All right. After about an hour, Sykes returns and he says, I was able to contact somebody from the uh, Cat Fancier Society, and uh, they gave a phone number of 
English phone number. Uh, I don't know what they, they really like. Um, what would you like to do? This is the number of the society, not Edith. Particular. No, this is this is the number of Edith, uh, the the chairwoman. Um, the chairman. Chairperson. Uh, well, I think I mean she should know that uh, Thomas is in danger. Any ideas, friends? Before I call her, phone her early before the dinner hour and say that her friend is in mortal danger. You know, we should have probably checked the sign-in log and see if she'd come to visit him. Yeah, how, how would she even have been informed? Well, I mean, she's a man, been writing him letters. Well, she's been writing um, letters to Louis Wayne. We don't know about her relationship with Thomas Montford, except that Wayne told us that oh, I had a crush. I thought we were talking about Wayne. I'm sorry. Uh, um, I, my my uh, first impulse is to approach it as if it were an emergency, as if it were still the, earlier this afternoon, and say, your friend has shown up at the museum with injuries, but perhaps I shouldn't alarm her. What do you, what do you think? Jane, you're... A delicate, you have a delicate nature. I wouldn't uh, let her know right away about that. I think uh, going with a general inquiry into the situation at first here would be the best route. Um, keep it gentle, keep it, keep it calm. Let's not uh, upset anything at the moment. Uh, if she has not found out after a while, we might broach the subject, but I believe but at some point, uh, the world word would the word would get to her. Do you want to phone her yourself? Do you think that a lady's voice might be uh, hmm. less alarming? Hmm. Also, Felix, you're a bit of a charmer. Do you want to call the strange woman and tell her, uh, ask her about her relationship with the man who? Again, showed up with three deep gashes to his chest and gut today. Reginald, I've ate so much fish from a street cart and drank oh, so good much heavens. whiskey. I really don't think I could hold a whole conversation without making a mess all over the place. I think I blame Cyrus. Well, I was trying to find catfish and cornbread, but I can't find that anywhere on this bloody island. You know. Cornbread, you Correct. say. Corn. Cornbread. Correct. I'm gonna. I Catfish, will have. Isn't that what the the uh, Asians eat? I don't know what they eat over there, but down south, that's what we eat. That's a thing that um, that eats human waste, isn't it? The catfish. What well, makes it tasty? It's a bottom feeder. Bottom, top, uh, it don't matter as long as it tastes good. You fry as it long up. As you gentlemen are feeling well. Uh, what do you think, Jane? I bought you all portions, but you took three hours, so we finished them. That explains several things. <laughs> I will have a word about this with Sykes later. Hmm. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll phone her, Edith. Hmm. I would I would suggest putting together a uh, meet up, as they say, in uh, a what? Well, to, to if it if it se if it seems that we need to uh, inquire further beyond the phone call. Well, hmm. might I be a little blunt? Uh, if this man dies, and you don't tell her, she might hold it against us. Maybe make a an inquiry that it's something important. Let's all go over there, talk to her. She's going to rush out of the house and head to the hospital. And uh, Felix and I can see if the cat's eye opals inside. But also keep in mind that we don't know this guy really 
I mean, so if we don't say anything, what's she going to, you know, no, how's she going to put two and two together? I'm just saying use my fortune on an event to our advantage. Well, Sorry, are, we are you in feel like that with? Go ahead, please. Oh, sorry. No, Jane, please. No, I'm just saying that um, Mr. Finley might not be entirely off here. We could arrange for a meeting and if necessary. If necessary. I feel but, as um, Cyrus and Felix have become breaking and entering Max, the sort of obsession. I think Maniac is a little strong. Fetish. I don't, I mean, it certainly didn't do you any, didn't behoove you in any way to violate Miss Lycaster's private domicile. Here we go. Did it? Coming. it? What did you find? You stole fizzy lifting drink from Miss Lycaster. <laughs> Reginald, I'm not sure what all those words mean, but I'm insulted. <laughs> At any rate, all right. I uh, I'm going to ask Sykes to bring me the phone, and I'm going to speak to Miss Edith. Yes, sir. Here you are. Thank you. Your finger goes there, and it goes this way. Right. Clockwise. Very good. Thank you, Sykes. All right. The phone rings a couple of times. Oh, seven two three. Those residents. Uh, good evening. I'm sorry to trouble you. Uh, I'm calling uh, from the Wentworth Club. Do you know us uh, downtown on the square? Uh, th this is uh, this is Martha the maid. But uh, ah, I see. Is the is the mistress at home? Uh, just a moment, please. Thank you. Who's calling? Uh, uh, good evening. Uh, this is Reginald Harcourt from the Wentworth Club. Yes, let me just give it just a moment, please. Mm. Do a do a listen for. That's failure. Okay. Um, a few moments go by and a voice comes over and says, uh, yes, this is uh, Mrs. Edith Lewis. Uh, to whom am I speaking? Mrs. Lewis, I'm sorry to uh, trouble you on a late afternoon. This is Reginald Harcourt. Oh, yes, Mr. Whitman. Harcourt. What can I do for you? I had the most astonishing experience this afternoon, uh, and oh. I, I, I hesitate to trouble you with it, but I wonder if you are concerned. I met a Mr. Thomas Montfort under the most unusual circumstances. Oh, Mr. Montfort, yes, he's a friend of mine. Do you know, uh, the fellow was uh, attacked today. And, he was attacked? Uh, he was attacked most violently. Oh, my goodness. Is he, oh, is he all right? Have they I'm taken not, him? He has certainly been hospitalized. I am not entirely as certain as to his current. Which, which hospital is he in? He was taken off to Charing Cross. He oh. was... He, he showed up at the British Museum, but he was confused about where he was. And the curious thing about it is that he was looking for another fellow from the Association of Cat Fanciers, Mr. Wayne. Uh, Mr. Wayne? Well, Mr. Wayne no longer belongs to the society. Uh, he's, he's a fellow. Oh, my goodness. I, uh, I, I thank you for calling. I, I must uh, go quickly if uh, you say he's been injured. Um, and badly. Uh, thank you for calling, though. Uh, you're and most welcome. Do you, do you, would you mind telling me how you know the gentleman in question? Um, she's already gone. She's gone. Uh, and the, the maid comes over and she says, um, uh, she handed me back the phone. Uh, I, I assume your phone conversation is done. Um, you said something rather upsetting to her. Yes, I'm afraid uh, she she knows a fellow that was injured, a, 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 a Thomas Montfort. Do you know who that is? Yes, Mr. Montfort, yes. Um, uh, he's a very close friend of hers. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
Uh, he was it, attacked today. He was stabbed. In the background, from across the room, uh, you hear Mrs. Lewis's voice, and she says, Martha, what are you doing on the phone? Hang that up now. And she says, goodbye. And she hangs up the phone. Um, right. Uh, I shall uh, share the quiet side of the conversation with my fellows. Uh, I suggest a round of brandies for us all. I'm going to try his home now. Uh, I don't think it should be any more productive or friendly. I'm sorry, where are you trying now? Uh, I'm going to try his home phone number. Oh, Mr. Munford? Croydon, yeah. I don't believe you've got Mr. Munford. You still don't know where he lives. He's, there's no Munford in Croydon or Suffolk. I don't know. I, I, I suppose, yeah, you probably, okay. We'll say Sykes finds the phone number. Uh, you try the phone number, and it rings, and it rings, and it rings, but it doesn't know if there's no answer. Well, I would uh, say we should definitely go check his apartment out. Sorry, flat. We can't check out her place because apparently she lives with a bunch of people. Maid staff and what have you. She lives with a maid who from Reginald's description of the conversation is a little bit under the thumb. So maybe a couple pound notes in the hand might loosen her lips a little. Maybe a little bit more. She might be afraid of her. And who was it that told her to get off the phone? No, the... The lady I was the mistress of the house. She hadn't left yet. She was dressing to try to go to the hospital. Apparently, her attach attachment to Mr. Wayne is not exclusive. That's not a bad idea. I do think maybe um, keeping the uh, skinny on the situation might be the way to approach this. Yeah, I agree. And I take it that Mumford didn't have any butlers or maids and may, uh, probably a bachelor if nobody's answering the phone. We can't be too certain about that. Oh, just an educated guess. You know, Cyrus, we could get in that house if we wanted to. It's not that big of a deal. Um, even with the maid in the house. If we wanted to shake her down, uh, a couple dollars will loosen her up, I'm sure. If not, then we'll take alternate route. Yeah, I think well, the fish is finally starting to settle. Oof. It's all the extra mushy peas I got. Yeah, it was rough. I don't, I don't want to eat from a street cart again. How could you not? That, I mean, this is probably some of the best food I had since I've been sit on the uh, It doesn't sit in my stomach as well as pheasant. You need to wash it down with a nice tall glass of Tennessee whiskey. I'm telling you, not all this fancy wine crap. Tennessee whiskey, some good fried fish, some cornbread, set you straight. Well, right. to the subject at hand, I, perhaps maybe I should go speak with the the maid, yeah. and um, perhaps with uh, Mr. Albright. Sure. In that we have no, no obvious connection with anybody else. You guys got your own car? You want to take mine? Um, I got my own car. Oh, there you go. All right. So, Jane, are you going alone? No, I suggested that uh, that uh, Fuller accompany me. Okay. Yeah, I'm going. What are the rest of you doing? You're muted. Probably better. They, I'm just going to, it's late in the afternoon, right? Yeah. I'm going to take a nap and get my mind about me because later on this evening, I wouldn't mind uh, if Cyrus is interested. 
he and I riding over to Delgado's and just kind of seeing what's going on at nighttime at his place. Absolutely. Whatever, whatever you want. I mean, we did, well, I put away half a bottle of whiskey already, so. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not in any shape to drive. I mean, I offered Jane my car. You know how I feel about her to begin with. I mean, it's only a half a bottle of whiskey. I'm sure I could drive fine. Yeah. I'm going to catch a nap in our room that we have here at our fancy club. And uh, that way we're sharp for later on once the once the sun gets low. All right. Um, Reginald, what are you going to do? Uh, I think I'm going to... Um... Since you all are so uh, occupied with your various sorts of espionage, I think I'm going to go to the museum and um, draw some maps regarding the relative placements of things in the new wing, the uh, things that are moving around by themselves, the things in the cellar. I have some vague notions troubling me about physical relations of what's going on there. Is it safe to go alone, though? During public hours, I think it is. Now, are you guys, do we have the clearance to spend the night at the museum tonight? We have not. We were, um, we were at the, and maybe I'll try to pick the paperwork up as well, if I can catch, um, what's his name? Yates. Before it, Yates, before it's too late, because uh, he was really, it's nearly finished filling it out when the uh, assault was made public. So I missed that. So yeah, I'll drop by, I'll stop by him first, but I wanna, I wanna get a clearer set sense of all the venues of activity too. Okay. Um, well, to handle that, we'll say that if you go by the, 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 uh, the museum, before six, then you're able to get a hold of Yates and he finishes off the paperwork. In fact, he's already finished it and he's just got them ready to hand to you. Um, uh, he says that at 545, he'll talk to uh, Jack Blanchard and tell him that you're going to, uh, you're going to be staying there. Are you going to stay there tonight? Yes, absolutely. Okay. If you if you uh, if you if you're coming later than six, then you can uh, show your passes at the door, and they'll let you in. All right. And how many did he? How who's back been, at the, Sorry. Uh, how many of you are going to be there? There's. Let's just say whoever's going there has a, a pass. All right. Um, what are the rest of you doing? Sleeping for a little bit. You're sleeping. Okay. I'm just taking, I'm taking a nap so that I'm able to stay up late into the night without any, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to be dragging come two, three o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to take a little disco nap. Uh, it's a thing that we say over in the West end of, uh, the place where I live at King's Cross. Okay. Yeah, I might as well do that too because I have a feeling if we'll be up very late. All right. Um, Shane, you're heading out yes. to Croydon. Yes. Uh, okay. Me and, and Fuller are heading out out there to. Uh, Croydon is a district. Place. Croydon is a district in South London, um, so it should take you. We'll just say it takes you forty minutes or so okay. to get out there. Um, uh, and you go to, uh, the street, uh, she is on Hermitage Road, uh, in Upper Nor Norwood. Um, uh, you drive, as you're driving down the street, it's a fancy neighborhood. Mm. Um, you can see that as you approach, it's probably a two or three story, um, 
very fancy house uh, with a mm. garden around it and a fence. And we'll say that you're there about, I don't know, 7.30. All right. Okay. Hmm. Uh, just to refresh my memory, what was Martha's last name? Uh, I don't think she told you. You're talking about the maid? No, 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 not the maid. The Mar Ethel Lewis. Edith. Oh, Ethel. Lewis. Edith. 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 Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting things mixed up here. Okay. All right. So we're gonna go up to the house. Okay. There. Um, knock on the door. All right. Uh, you knock on the door. After a few moments, uh, uh, the door opens and uh, a rather uh, plump maid uh, in a in an impeccable uniform uh, answers the door and she says, uh, "Yes, what can I do for you?" Hello. Yes. Um, not to be too forward. Um, we were looking for uh, for uh, Miss Edith Lewis. Well, she's not here right now. She's had to travel. Uh, oh, dreadful, uh, dreadful. Into town. Oh, my. Would there be some way we could arrange for a meeting with her uh, at some point? Oh, yes. Call back tomorrow. Okay, no problem. Here's my card. Um, she takes your card. We have a mutual acquaintance that uh, that uh, recommended, recommended me to her. Uh, of course. The, uh, Gap I'll, yes, I'll tell her. Yes. Thank you. Well, if you don't, I, I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to pry, but what is 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 there something wrong? Our, our acquaintance said that she would would be rather available. I'm I'm sorry. I'm not at liberty to discuss uh, what Mrs. Lewis is is doing. Sorry. Okay, no no problem. There. Uh, please uh, do have a call at some point. Yes. Thank you. She closes mm. the door. And right. Fuller didn't say anything. <laughs> I learned my lesson the first time I talked to the people. <laughs> All right. All right. We've got our foot in the door, which is the intention here. Um, by now, Reginald, what were you going to do after you went to the museum, or what are you going to do at the museum? Um, I suppose having... Uh, Okay, so I, I got the passes from uh, Mr. Yeats. Yeats. Uh, so I guess I'll, before I go to the club and have a nap, I'll uh, see if Audrey's around. Okay. Um, it, it, it takes you 10 minutes or so to find her. Um, uh, but she's actually having a like a, a coffee break. No, no. At this time, she's getting ready to go home. She's like, oh, Reginald. I didn't expect to see you. Uh, Audrey, I never know when I'll see you, although it's never too soon, of course. Um, do you know, uh, we're trying to figure out what the devil has happened to the woman who went missing downstairs? Yes, it's quite Have you a heard any further scuttlebutt? Nope. nope, she seems to have vanished without a trace. Did you know Nancy Greenberg at all? In passing. Did you think she was a sort of reliable and stable type? I, I didn't know her that well. I didn't work with Not her. Not well much. enough to know. Do you feel at all anxious about being here at night? Yes. After, and have you heard these noises? I've I've heard noises. I've you know, one one becomes used to being down here, but uh, it doesn't take much to to give you that creep factor. The heebie-jeebies. But you are more or less inured to it. You can work regardless. Yes, during the day. Otherwise, I become quite, uh, well, you know, it's... Uh, Have it's, your hours adjusted to compensate for the anxiety? I, I'm not sure I understand what you mean. 
We were working early hours so as not to be here late at night when things go bump in the night, as it were. Well, it's not really outside of my normal hours unless I have some project that I'm working on. Uh, I'm, I'm, quite have... I'm quite well adjusted. Certainly you are. Well, um, we've gotten permission from uh, the uh, security director Yates to um, spend uh, an overnight or two here, see if we can spot what the devil is going on. Well, I hope you brought your camera because maybe you'll be able to catch a ghost on film. Indeed, that would be uh, something of a coup. Um, yes, if I find something out that's remarkable, you'll be the first to know. I hope you sleep uh, well tonight. I'm sure I'll be fine. Probably curl up with an old book and read it. Um. What should I read to stay awake all night, do you suppose? Well, what sort of literature do you like? You know, I'm fond of um, mostly uh, lighter things. You know, the Agatha Christie sort of. Oh, those are fun. Yeah. I don't need, uh, real life is anxious enough for me. Um, well, if you don't uh, want to uh, bring us a cup of soup and a hot sandwich at three o'clock in the morning, I shall see you tomorrow. Well, enjoy yourselves. Don't, don't let the ghosties or the ghoulies get you. We'll do our best, our level best. Good night to you. Good night. She takes her things and she leaves. All right, um, Fuller and Jane are, what are you doing? Are you on your way back? I would suggest we uh, prepare for a night at the museum with uh, Mr. Harcourt there, Mr. Albright. Sounds good to me. And we shall, with, with all luck, hear from my people in regards to uh, hopefully a meeting with um, our new friend. I know it seems like I didn't do much, but I'm trying to approach this from a rather different angle. Hey, you do better than I do in those situations. Well, I'm rather mixed. There's some situations where I do really well with and others that are, I've noticed take a, a different approach. Well, I guess we'll find out how the museum's gonna go tonight. Yes, quite. All right. So eventually you meet up with Reginald at the museum. Uh, Felix and Cyrus, somewhere around 9.30, uh, you wake up. So Felix, what's on the agenda? Are you muted? No, no, I'm oh. just really tired. I just woke up. Ah. Uh, did you want to go to Delgado's? Yes. I'm not saying we knock on the door, but maybe just kind of post outside and just see what kind of um, see what kind of traffic he's getting through there. Yeah. Um, could get dangerous. I mean, yep. all right, I'm uh, okay with that, but we should let somebody know where we're going just in case. Yeah, we can do that. Weren't the other chaps talking about going to the museum or something? I don't even know if that was uh, solidified. Yeah, I think they were trying to get some passes to spend the night at the museum so they could, uh, they could watch everything move around once the lights went off. So maybe we could swing by there after uh, Delgado's. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, we can go there. Then we could sit up while they catch some sleep. Yeah, that's true. Because I don't think any of them even, I don't think any of them caught any. So. All right. So you head over to Aloysius Delgado's and the front gates on his property are closed. Uh, but there are lights on and he has lights throughout his garden to light everything up. Um, do a spot hidden for me. There we go. All of us? No, just uh, Felix and uh, Cyrus. I failed that with a 77. Five. Okay. Uh, Felix, you very quickly realize that he has guards posted. They're on the second floor, um, on the balcony, and you can see two people. There might be a third or a fourth on the other side of the house. It's definitely doesn't want unwelcome visitors. It's an awful lot of guards for somebody who just collects artifacts here and there. He yep. isn't house staff either. You got two high, one on each side of the house. Oh, I didn't even see that other guy. Good eyes. Well, they got enough light out here to land a dirge bowl. Yep. Yeah. You're right with that. Hopefully it'll uh, be... We're, we'll, we're in the dark, so hopefully the light's obstructing our vision for us. Uh, I don't know. What are we? What's our end game here? Are we just staking this out, or I thought we'd just stake it out. I, was, I didn't. I didn't remember this wall and this gate when last we were here. So I wasn't expecting that. No, no. Come to think of it, I do remember it now. But we must have came up from the back. Well, we were out on the street anyway, and then we got preoccupied watching all the guests come out. That's true. And the gates were wide open, and there were cars everywhere, so didn't really pay that close attention to the back of this gate. I don't know. You, you know, it's 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 so impossible. I think it's almost worthless to sit here now. I didn't realize they had this much security here. We're going to have to actually get an invitation to get into this guy's place. Well, what we can do is drive back to the club, but see if anybody is following us. Remember, we have followed right now, though, right? You know, I didn't take close enough. I didn't pay close enough attention like I normally do. I'm slipping. Would there, um, would there be any kind of thing that you and I could do, Cyrus, that would uh, tell us if we had been made yet or not? You know, like some kind of shape that we could throw into a table and see what the top number of that shape would be to see if we'd been made or not. Oh, I'm going to uh, take a look around. And see if uh, anybody's watching us watch them. Do a spot hidden. Oh, six. Yeah, you don't see anybody. I think we're good, but... Um... The, uh, the grounds are lit up pretty well. You wouldn't be able to step on the grounds without being seen. But where you are uh, off the grounds, it's pretty dark. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to be able to get close to him, Cyrus. Let's. Or, let's. You want to take it to the museum? Yeah. Well, is it time? It's nine thirty at night. It's dark. Oh yeah. Uh, where does he get all this? It, it, it's. He sure does have a lot of electricity, doesn't he? For his whole his whole garden to be lit up. He's got money. And remember, if he thinks he's gonna live forever, 
he's going to spend everything he has now to obtain that goal. That's true. Very true. You know, I don't know if you have any friends in banking or anything. Maybe you could pull some strings and find out what kind of uh, cash assets he's actually playing with. Gauge his level, so to speak. Yeah. Are we driving? I mean, we're riding. Let's go. Yeah. There we go. And I want to keep an eye out for a tail the whole way back. Who's driving? I'm driving. Felix. Okay. Yeah, you don't see any. You don't see any tail. Mm -hmm. Um. And you guys are heading towards the museum. Yes. Yeah. Right. All right. Museum. All right. So you arrive at the museum, and uh, the guards are at the door. They're like, "I'm sorry, we're closed." Um, but very quickly they recognize you. And, yeah. um, uh, my name is Jack Blanchard. I'm the uh, the one in charge. Your friends are in the uh, Assyrian wing. Cool. Uh, down the Mike, stairs. Mike. Actually, they're downstairs. You guys are downstairs. All right. Should we just head there, or do you have to take us down? Or? No, you can go. It's just down that, down those stairs over there. Um, we'll be coming around every, you'll see us every half an hour or so. Good, good. So the stuff that's been moving around is not on a public floor, but it's downstairs? No, some of it's on the public floor. Things have been happening all the noises are downstairs. So right. you tell me how you guys want to situate yourselves. Yeah, my uh my inclination was to be near the multi-ton objects that are moving themselves around on a public floor. Okay. Maybe when more people show up we can divide up and decide well, you, that you're all there now. Downstairs. Yeah. You're all there now. Right. So um and nothing's, it's, you know, it's, it's say 1030, nothing's happened so far, I assume. Right. Um, I, you know, the, 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 the disappearance of the woman happened downstairs, and that's where the sounds are. The things are dancing around up here. I want to see how these things move, so I've stayed up, upstairs so far. But, you know how we want to dispose ourselves is up to all of us. Does anyone want to go downstairs and listen for the strange sounds or look for the magic door that Nancy Greenborough or her work name was disappeared through? Wherever you I'll, need me, I'll go. I'll, I'll stay up I'll here. I'll go downstairs too. I'll stay up here with Reginald. Okay. So so Jane downstairs, Cyrus downstairs. Felix upstairs, Reginald upstairs, and Fuller? Downstairs. You're downstairs. Okay. Everybody do luck rolls. Wow, five. Zero, I've, five. I've 80, I fell. Made it 37. I rolled a five too. All right. <laughs> what the hell is right. going on, Reginald? We have, yeah, that's a weird, it's a weird thing. All right. <laughs> Felix and Reginald, you're upstairs. The, uh, you kind of underestimated the creep factor. Okay. It's a lot of, strange um, statuary. I mean, you've seen it during the day and it's just, it's just old statues and objects. But when the museum is dead quiet and the lights are still sort of shining on these objects and they're so ancient and they're so unmoving that, uh, it's really kind of creepy. You're almost thinking that if you saw something move, you would move to another country. 
Um, you want you uh, do you sit or do you wander around or what do you do? A lot of pacing on my part. Yeah, I'm just okay. basically leaning against a wall. Um, do you stop and read the exhibits or do you just sort of not pay any attention to any of them in particular? Because it's kind of boring. After the first hour, I've read all the wall text. Okay. So I'm just circling and watching the shadows change. Um, as you are moving from one of the galleries to another, you hear a very distinct scraping noise and it's coming from behind you, maybe in the previous room. Um, Psst, fake legs. Psst. You guys are like right next to each I'm other. I'm right here, Reginald. <laughs> what are you doing? Three so here that. Huh? What? The scraping? <laughs> go back there and and see what it was you do oh you do oh oh i'm gonna go i'll go yeah I'll go. go i'll go here i go i'm going here all I go. right so felix um you go back to the other room and there is a statue um, it is uh, ancient uh, Egyptian, in fact, uh, that has moved maybe three inches um, off of its pedestal, off of its uh, where it was, thing and it's turned slightly towards the side. Like and you're pretty sure that's not the way us. that it was sitting there. Slightly towards us or slightly away from us? Actually, slightly away from where you were. And flashlight on the floor shows scraping. Um, yes, yeah, definitely. And the, is the damn thing warm if I touch it? No, it's room temperature. Don't touch it, Reginald. What do you want me to do? Well, I, you don't it's want to just move. We were just here. We were just here. I That's two and a half. Damn tons! Well, maybe we shouldn't be standing so close to it. And then, what if it decides to just take a header? I'll back up. Uh, the room otherwise is still. Yep. It, and I shine my flashlight around. Do I see dust motes dancing, or is it still? You don't know whether you're seeing any more dust than there would have been in the air. Um, do, a, do a listen roll. You're muted, Reginald. 14. All right. Uh, you start to hear a clicking noise. It's a click, 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 click. And it suddenly dawns on you that you're hearing one of the guards coming down the hallway. Just, it sounds like he's not hurrying. He's just on his regular routine, but he's come around a corner down the hall. He's heading this direction. You just now notice that he's, he's heading this way. All right. The three of you downstairs. Um, this place is even creepier. It's uh there's a lot of things lying on tables. Uh, it's vast. Uh, the, there are rooms where there's not a lot of walking room. You have to kind of, you don't have to squeeze between tables, but the tables are, uh, uh, there's no quick way to get out, you know, without climbing over stuff. So it's got a kind of a claustrophobia to it. There's no windows to the outside. Uh, it's, it's pretty creepy. Um, everybody do a listen roll. 
23, I passed. 22 hard. Just a regular. Okay. Those of you who passed, uh, as you're sitting there, I, what are you guys doing? Are you looking at stuff? Are you talking to one another? Or are you? I was kind of walking around looking and just idle chit chat. Fuller, you're uh, you're muted. Just walking around looking at stuff. Okay. Um. Those of you who who heard uh, heard something, what you hear is at first you you're just hearing the the click of your own feet on the uh, the marble floor. Um, but you start to hear a kind of a rhythmic, very faint, far away, but a kind of a banging noise, and you're not sure where it's coming from. You hear that? I'm going to try and hone in on it, see if I can. Well, do another listen roll. No. So you start walking from room to room, and for a moment you think maybe it's getting louder, but then you can't really hear it very much anymore. You go back to the other room, you think you might be able to hear it again, and you do this going back and forth, and you realize that every time you move, you're making noise. Just the sound of your own clothes is making noise, and and then you lose track of it. You're not mm. sure that it's there. Um, everybody, go ahead and do another listen roll. I found that. I, mean, I got a two. A standard. Okay, Fuller. In a moment of quietness, when everybody is standing still, well, let's do it this way. Uh, Jane, you had a regular. Um, there's something that you think you're hearing. It's at the back of your head. You, you can't identify it. You want to even think that it might be, you know, the settling of the building or the a squeaky sound or something like that. Of uh, Fuller you hear what you think is sounds like music. Um, it's very rhythmical. It's fast. Um, but it doesn't sound like any kind of music you've ever heard before. It sounds somewhat, not, not like classical music. Um, it's, it's whiny. Like and a drone? Well, you're not sure that it's music at all, but it has a musical quality to it. Walk that in you... that direction. All right, go ahead and do another listen poll. Following uh, Fuller. Um, it's not it's not a hard, but I mean, I did pass. All right. You you walk back and forth the same way as you did before, looking to see if you can find where there's a there's a loudness factor and from the best you can tell uh, in in a certain room we'll say room J it seems a little louder than any of the other rooms but it's not coming from it's not coming from anywhere that you can it's like it's way way off in the distance what would be in that room just a, like I say, tables with artifacts and then stuff all over them. Make a note of that. Yeah, well, we're going to keep walking around at least. All right. And I think that's where we'll end it. It's not a climb, it's not a big cliffhanger, but it's a good spot. We'll come back to you guys in the museum next time. Our players. Included David Gassaway, John Byram, Ford Fitch, Jason Melnichok, and Jerry Bryant with myself as the Keeper of the Secrets. We're currently producing up to four shows a week with music and sound effects added in post-production in order to create a richer listener experience. 
We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. The costs involved with the show are provided almost entirely by our patrons. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. If you'd like to support our show, visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar to a month helps us a lot. You can find a link in the description below. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch that bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answering the questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh together with all the members of our gaming club inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck in gaming.